Get ready to rumble. Chilling Show Unleashed on the Seven Thunders Media Network. Former city councilor, husband, father, and community watchdog. Your host, Rob Schilling. Welcome to the Shilling Show Unleashed podcast. Remember, your direct support makes our show possible, and you can directly support this podcast by visiting shillingshow.com and then clicking on the Patreon banner at the top of the page to make a monthly contribution. We appreciate your support. Thanks for joining me in this special edition of the Shilling Show Unleashed podcast. I wanted to reach out directly to my listening audience. Many of you, probably most of you, are friends, and we've known each other for a while. And I wanted to share some thoughts about the events of January 6th in the United States Capitol and how we ought to be taking this in. I want to start out by saying that violence is not the answer I want to be very clear about it. Violence is not the answer. So when we see people becoming violent with no direct provocation, that's something that we don't want to see happening in this country. I will also say from a biblical worldview that self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the vast majority of people at this event in Washington, D.C., were exhibiting self-control. None of us is perfect, and we understand that people were frustrated who were gathered here. And sometimes when you gather in a large group and you're suffering this sort of frustration, things can ramp up. I think it's what we saw yesterday. The next thing that I want to bring to your attention that I think is important to state at the outset of this conversation is if you break the law, you need to go to jail, or you need to at least be charged with breaking the law. The rule of law is not one-sided, and yet what we have seen over the past several months very specifically, but over the past many years, is that there seems to be a double standard in people who break the law and get punished, whether it's here in Charlottesville, as we saw in the August of 2017 events, there were many people who were charged and persecuted Uh, because they were on the wrong side of the issue, while others have been let go with a little slap on the wrist because they were on the right side of the issue, the correct side, according to local law enforcement. The courts have become corrupted. The judiciary has become corrupted. And so when people see that other people can go around burning down businesses, breaking things, creating havoc and raising hell, they somehow assume that I guess it's okay for them to do it. So we need to get back to the rule of law equal justice under the law. We have been far, far away from that. Did you notice that the term mostly peaceful protesters, which has been used throughout in the mainstream media over the past several months and beyond, mostly peaceful protesters, as we saw businesses being burned, as we saw violence being committed, that term was used over and over again. However, the benefit of the doubt was not given to those at the United States Capitol yesterday when a small group, a relatively small number of people, decided to breach the United States Capitol building, whereas the vast, vast majority truly were mostly peaceful in the truest sense of the word, more so probably than any of the examples given by the mainstream media over all those other events where we saw rioting, looting, stealing. It was not the case here, and that term was not used. I also want to acknowledge the killing of Ashley Babbitt. I saw a couple of very horrific tapes of what happened to her, her being shot, and as one person put it, executed on the spot. I have great compassion when anybody dies in a situation like this. It's the last thing that she anticipated in coming here. And no matter what the circumstance was, I have great sympathy for the family of Ashley Babbitt, and we pray for them now. I know a lot of people who went to this event. These are not violent people. They're peaceful to the core. They generally have a biblical worldview. They're not violent, but they are angry. The emotion of anger is, in many cases, what drove them there. They love this country. They want to love the country, but they see it going in the wrong direction. So they gather together with like-minded people to make a statement in Washington, D.C. Yes, they are emotional. Yes, they're angry. There was also a lot of joy expressed there as people were praying and singing the national anthem and other expressions of patriotism and faith. 
We in this country have a right to peaceably assemble and to petition to seek redress for our grievances, and I believe most of the people who were there in Washington, D.C. were exercising their constitutional rights under the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. There was Antifa and BLM present. That seems to be confirmed by photo evidence and other reports from the scene. However, I'm not sure that was the majority of the people that breached into the United States Capitol. Here in Charlottesville, we have two people weighing in on this subject, Larry Sabato, University of Virginia, and University of Virginia President Jim Ryan, both of them very weak, spineless in many instances before all of this. And of course, they had to weigh in and call this, quote unquote, a coup. So I think many people would say, is stealing an election a coup? Because a lot of the people that were up there, maybe a vast majority of people up in Washington, D.C., believe that the election was stolen. And what about the coup that occurred at UVA some years back when Mother Teresa Sullivan was removed by the people who hired her? And then there was an uprising and a rebellion The insurrectionists at the University of Virginia, the faculty and the radical students insisted and demanded that Mother Teresa Sullivan be returned to her seat, which she was. Isn't that interesting? You see, I guess it's not a coup if you like what happened, but if you don't like what happened, you call it a coup. The protesters at the University of Virginia, and that would include a number of faculty, did not respect the decision of those who rightfully made it in a position of power And so I see something similar, and I see a lot of hypocrisy in the claims of Sabato and Jim Ryan. And I will say that Larry Sabato went out on a limb, calling President Trump the worst president in the history of the United States of America in a recent public statement. Did you notice that the attack on government has been treated differently than the attack on private property? This is fascinating to me because as I watched all of these riots and the burnings, the things going on in Portland and Minneapolis over the summer, there was almost no condemnation by elected Democrats of all of this, and even a lot of Republicans were very quiet about it, when people's private property and livelihoods were being destroyed before our very eyes. And yet now, an attack on government property at the U.S. Capitol, well, I agree, was not the proper route to get your grievances addressed. However, if you can't condemn attacks on private property, why would you condemn attacks on government property? You see, the private citizen, the individual, is at the center. The government is there to protect the rights, the God-given rights of individual citizens and their private property. This is where we've gone wrong. So we had thousands of businesses burned across America. Tens of thousands of people are more out of work as a result of these riots. People threatened in their own homes, Senator Josh Hawley, Mitch McConnell, but many others. Senators attacked by mobs, people like Ron Paul and his wife who were attacked after leaving the White House. They couldn't even be protected leaving the White House. And of course, speaking of the White House, the White House was stormed at the end of May in 2020 by Black Lives Matter and other sympathizers. The president had to be rushed to a secure bunker. I didn't hear a lot of complaints about that, at least from the mainstream media. How about when the Capitol Senate building was stormed during the Kavanaugh hearings in October of 2018? Many of those who stormed, who took over, who protested and screamed and threatened senators were celebrated by the left. And how about national monuments being toppled and desecrated right here in Charlottesville, but across the country? Again, not a word from the left because they agreed with these actions. And then there are the countless individuals across the country who have been threatened, intimidated, and physically attacked by BLM, Antifa, and their related minions. Do you remember Congresswoman Maxine Waters out of California calling for heckling and harassment in public? This is what she had to say. If you see anybody from that cabinet, speaking of President Trump's cabinet, in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out, you create a crowd, and you push back on them, and you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. This is creating a climate of fear in the United States of America, and it's coming from the left. I remember here in Charlottesville, and I documented this on film, going back about four or five years, Corey Stewart was here as a candidate for elected office in Virginia, verbally attacked and chased out of Lee Park. When the police were called, we were told that they don't provide protection to political candidates. 
How fascinating. Later that evening, Corey Stewart, candidate, was in the Melting Pot restaurant downtown Charlottesville, and some of the leftist violent mob here in this town got word of it and sent their troops into the restaurant, essentially running Corey Stewart, his wife, and their party out of the restaurant through a back door, and the police did nothing. Lest we forget Woody Kane, the son of Senator Tim Kane, a participant in an Antifa riot in the Minnesota State Capitol back in March of 2017. A description of the event said, rioters used mace, tasers, smoke bombs, and firecrackers on members of the pro-Trump rally and punched others in the face. Kane was one of six arrested over the violence. And Tim Kane said, I support and love my son. That was his response. In many ways, what happened yesterday was reminiscent of what happened here in Charlottesville 2017. There were a lot of false perceptions created. The media was complicit in fostering what will be and what was lingering deceptive narratives about the day. And the changes that followed then, I'm sure we'll see changes following these events because of how they're being portrayed. The demonization of anything, quote unquote, Confederate, the rise of racial shaming, attacks on capitalism, and more. And of course, at the center of all this, President Trump is receiving the blame. I heard Fox News in the immediate aftermath and for much of the day today, stoking anger. President Trump was stoking anger for months. Well, do people have a right to be angry about anything, and did they really need to be stoked? Or are they smart enough to figure out for themselves that something's drastically wrong in America? And now, of course, blocking the president, his attempts to communicate by shutting him off of Facebook and Twitter. This is outrageous. And the public discussion um, being fomented not only by Democrats and some Republicans, but also by the media of implementing the 25th Amendment to remove the president forcibly from office. Where do we go from here? Well, first of all, we realize that the media and government are now in full collusion. I would anticipate the rise of social scoring like they have in China, demonization, deep platformization, and deprecation of the political enemies of Joe Biden. We've already heard the calls from Larry Sabato and others, prominent Democrats across the country, saying now we're going to prosecute President Trump and we're going to prosecute his supporters in the United States Congress. There is a purge coming and a new cultural revolution, again, hearkening back to communist China, where people like me will be severely restricted and perhaps people like you as well. And we will witness the further destruction of liberty in the United States of America. We had a firewall in President Donald Trump. They have realized that he's going to be leaving office now and that there is no more protection for conservatives and Christians in the United States of America. And let the purge Let the destruction, let the assault begin. Thank you for joining me today for this very special edition of the Schilling Show Unleashed podcast. Make sure you're praying for our leaders and for the United States of America. 